an examination of the number system by Rusty Waller. As previously explained, the entire system of mathematics is founded upon the acceptance of the number one. The number one is in turn described by the system it was used to create. This is a fundamental paradox in mathematics. Since the entire system of mathematics is constructed on this paradox, the entire system of mathematics may be inherently flawed. This is like looking up the number one in the dictionary and being sent to the number system. Then looking up the number system and being sent to the number one. You may find this alarming since mathematics is the purest body of logic ever constructed by mankind. Again, we are reminded of the infallible nature of God. His logic has no such paradox. We are also reminded of the fallible nature of man. Accordingly, we must hold a vigilant view towards the misuse of mankind's wisdom in assaulting the ramparts of our faith. To understand more about the nature of logic in infinity, we will examine the number system noting its construction and limitations. We will begin with the number one. Through the operation of addition, we can now add one plus one to arrive at two. By adding one to two, we have now arrived at three. By repeating the process, we arrive at the counting numbers. They are one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on. These numbers continue to infinity, starting with one and continuing under the operation of addition. Again, they are called the counting numbers. Would we get to infinity quicker by counting by ones or by tens? The answer may surprise you. We would get to infinity at the same time. This is because we can establish a one-to-one -one relationship when comparing one, two, three, and so on to 10, 20, 30, and on to infinity. One corresponds to 10, two corresponds to 20, and three corresponds to 30, and so forth. Both cases are moving to infinity at the same pace. Once more, we note that infinity does not follow the same rules as finite. We would not get to infinity any faster if counting by hundreds, thousands, millions, or billions, since the one-to-one -one correspondence can easily be established. This does make your head hurt, does it not? Obviously, the counting numbers are infinite. Where we can draw a one-to-one -one correspondence, we have established the same level of infinity. This is a new concept for us. This level of infinity is called Aleph-1, after the Hebrew letter Aleph. Through the identification of an operation known as subtraction, we can use the counting numbers to produce the integers. For example, 1 minus 1 is 0, 0 minus 1 is negative 1, negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2, and so on. The integers continue to infinity in both directions, the positive approach and the negative approach. We might at first believe that we have established a new level of infinity, but we have not done so. The counting numbers were built using number A plus number B. The integers are built using counting number A minus number B. The only difference is the operation utilized. In one case we add, in the other case we subtract, but number A and number B do not change. This means that a one-to-one -one correspondence can be drawn between the counting numbers and the integers indicating that both are an Aleph-1 level of infinity. They are at the same level. The rational numbers are represented as fractions with number A divided by number B. Remember that division can be written as a fraction. All we have done to construct the rational numbers is define a new operation known as division. Now consider this. The counting numbers are described as number A plus number B. The integers are described as number A minus number B. The rational numbers are described as number A divided by number B. Again, we find that a one-to-one -one correspondence can be drawn between the counting numbers, integers, and rational numbers. Contrary to our finite expectations, we discover that the counting numbers, integers, and rational numbers are all at the Aleph-1 level of infinity. Again, infinity is not obeying our finite expectations. Before you get too comfortable with Aleph-1 infinity, we will move on to examine the irrational numbers. Irrational numbers cannot be expressed as number A divided by number B. To help you grasp the concept of irrational numbers, let me carry you back to the time of the Greeks. The Greeks had developed the concept of number tied to counting. As such, they recognized the counting numbers, integers, and rational numbers only. This was fine until they encountered a problem that could not be solved with counting numbers, integers, or rational numbers. The Greek city of Ionia had encountered a severe plague. Believing the plague to be brought on by Apollo's anger at their actions, the Ionians approached the oracle at Delphi to ask the Pythia for a solution. The Pythia told the Ionians to double the volume of the altar at the temple of Apollo to lift the plague. You will recall that the volume of an object is equal to the measure of a side raised to the third power. Again, the volume is the length of a side cubed. The Ionians promptly double the length of each side. To their horror, they found that they had increased the volume eightfold as two cubed is eight. To exactly double the volume of the altar, they needed a number that when cubed would equal to two. Their number is known as the cube root of two. The cube root of two times the cube root of two times the cube root of two is equal to two. This number would double the volume of the altar of Apollos 
and lift the plague. The Ionians now had a serious problem. The cube root of two cannot be expressed as a counting number, integer, or rational number. This number fit none of their beliefs about numbers. In fact, in their system, the cube root of two did not even exist. Fortunately for them, as they struggled to solve this problem, the plague ceased, and life went on as usual. Numbers such as the cube root of two are called irrational numbers. Irrational numbers are numbers that cannot be expressed as a fraction with number A divided by number B. To the Greeks, they were so outside the limits of their definition of numbers that they called them the unmentionable numbers and tried to ignore them completely. This is what happens when many people meet concepts beyond their understanding. No one-to-one -one correspondence can be drawn between the irrational numbers and the counting numbers, integers, and rational numbers. The irrational numbers are thus a higher level of infinity known as an Aleph II level of infinity. Irrational numbers are numbers for which their decimal extensions do not repeat. Mankind can only estimate the value of an irrational number. Only God knows the value completely. An irrational number times an irrational number is often an irrational number. An irrational number, plus minus or times a rational number, is an irrational number. It might be said that irrational numbers have an amazing ability to reproduce themselves. There are infinitely more irrational numbers than there are counting numbers integers or rational numbers. Irrational numbers include such numbers as pi, which is the circumference of a circle divided by its diameter, the base of the natural logarithms designated by the letter e, and the golden ratio represented by the Greek letter phi. We will learn more about these in other videos. But for now, let us say that God used numbers such as these to create the universe. I will speculate that he used irrational numbers to show mankind that mankind is not as smart as he thinks he is. Certainly, irrational numbers such as pi, the base of the natural logarithms, and the golden ratio occur in the structural pattern of the universe. Of course, we have not yet discussed the complex numbers. Complex numbers include the square root of negative one. A positive number times a positive number produces a positive number. A negative number times a negative number produces a positive number. Only a complex number times a complex number can produce a negative number. These strange numbers come up again and again in explaining the workings of our natural world. Again, perhaps God used them in his creation just to show mankind that he is not as smart as he thinks he is. In conclusion to this video, please allow me to share a few thoughts about infinity. Infinity is infinitely layered. For example, Aleph 1 infinity, Aleph 2 infinity, Aleph 3 infinity, and so forth. What if the layers of infinity can be equated to the counting numbers? These might lead to integer and rational levels of infinity. Perhaps there may even be irrational levels of infinity. Does your head hurt yet? My point with all of this is that God is infinite. His ways are above our ways. Parts of infinity are just as great as infinity itself. God's love for humanity is infinite. His love for you and I is just as infinite as his love for humanity. Nothing is diminished. His love for you today is just as infinite as his love for you over your entire lifetime. We have an infinite God who has infinite love for humanity. We have an infinite God who has infinite love for each of us. What a God we serve.